Three, two, one. And continuing now, before we start actual assembly, a few more points here that I think is are noteworthy and important. If on this back of this timing cover, before you put it back on, this white part that you see here is actually an insulator. It protects the brass colored connectors here in the back from the rest of the motor. Uh, again, it's just a safety. They don't normally touch at all, but that's a safety precaution in the building of this motor to make sure there aren't any accidents at any time, especially if the motor gets hit when it's in your car and, and the car gets hit or something like that. It's just a protection deal, but it is important to be in there uh, before you put this motor back together. And probably one more view, too, of this stator. And we, I was talking about the coils, the, the phases, as I call it. The, this copper color right there, that's one of them. And as I come around, here's another one. And then the third one's over here. Um, on this, your speed controls, you'll see, or, or your ESCs, they talk about phase A, B, and C. Well, this is what they're talking about. This is what you're actually connecting to uh, when you solder your wires on here. You're connecting to these coils of wire. That's that copper wire. It's, it's the insulated copper wire that goes through the coils, that goes through this, through this uh, uh, blanks inside the motor, inside the can. Uh, again, that's what creates the magnetic fields that pulls that rotor along when you tell it to go. So, in these motors, uh, one of the things that a little bit different from my original R3 motors is the fact that this is just a two-piece construction. Basically, you've got two pieces that make this motor. Uh, I'm not talking about the rotor, which is a third piece, and those other little parts here. But the main construction of this is two-piece. Whereas in my R3 motors, it was a three-piece design. The reason why this is called the two-piece is because this end part, along with the can, is all one piece. One of the, the positives of that is the fact that it, it's stronger. This front piece that normally, on, and in, in my R3 motors, which work real well, but I was, again, I was thinking about rigidity when I was designing this, that this is now part, all one part, it's all, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, a cast, it's not a cast part, it's actually upset forged is the proper term for this, made out of aluminum that's then machined. It's all one piece, and then it has this other piece back in the, on the back. So in essence, these are now two-part instead of three-part motors. And again, I tried to do that. I thought it makes it a stronger structure uh, when compared to a three-piece motor. Okay, I think we're ready to put this back together. And one of the inherent disadvantages of these, of this particular structure is it's kind of tricky to get the rotor back in there again. And so again, this uh, hobby wing, uh, basically it's a shimming structure. It goes in there to kind of help center the, the rotor back into the can. Uh, really makes this a whole lot easier um, we just want to make sure, we don't want the shims to fall off because the shims are very important. Uh, that, again, we want to make sure that we keep the, the rotor centered in the magnetic field as much as we can. And I forgot to say when I was taking this apart that it's very important. You'll notice that down here that I put my uh, shims into two piles. And the reason I did this, I want to make sure that I went back. When you put this back together, you want to go back the same way. Um, you guys don't need to do all the extra shimming that I do. When I put these motors together, they are shimmed correctly. So don't try to make more work for yourself, and I don't try to make more work for myself, um, is that if you keep your shims separate so that when you put the motor back together, you don't have to worry about it. It's already done the first time. It's done right the first time. It's that, and just like this, I don't have to, to re-shim it again because I know that this, these shims go here and this shim goes here. So. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to start putting this motor back together. And again, I'm using this hobby wing tool. And again, that is to help center this rotor. Again, this rotor, of course, is magnetic. And these are aluminum pliers that are usually, you can go to most hobby shops. These, this is aluminum, made out of aluminum, so that it's not magnetic, which makes it a whole lot easier when you're uh, working with a rotor, because there's lots of magnets in it. Uh, in fact, it's very strong. Uh, the magnets in these things are just phenomenal. 
uh, and this is the reason why we get so much power out of that. But with aluminum, aluminum, it doesn't, uh, it makes it much easier to handle this. Uh, again, I'm real careful about keep, trying to keep steel away from it because they'll do crazy things and it'll pinch your fingers. You can ask me. But anyway, now I'm going to put the shims back on. The big shim always goes against the, the front of the motor. And now I'm just going to put the other shims back on here, just like that. Now, if I put it in there like that, I'm afraid that always the shim's going to come off. And in reality, also, I don't want this uh, rotor just to be banging itself in there. Uh, it does make some noise. So typically what I do, I, break, I put the motor on the side like this so that the shims don't fall off. And before I put it in there, I'm going to put it on there like this. I hope you can see some of what I'm doing. Now you can hear the, the rotor is now in there. It's trying to go through that small hole and without that uh, hobby wing tool that helps line it up, uh, it wouldn't go into that bearing very easily. In fact, it's very frustrating. Well, because of that, now I can see it and I also can control how fast that rotor. I don't want it banging on that side. Um, I've never seen one come apart because I did a lot of that in the beginning when I started to work with these R4 motors. Um, but by doing it that way, I put it on horizontal so it just doesn't bang. That way I can control how fast that rotor in there because it goes in there hard. It wants to get in that hole. So anyway, now we have a, the basic part of it. Now we're ready to put this on. I'm checking to make sure. Yep, I've got the, the uh, insulator, that white insulator in there. Now I'm just going to press this down. Again, the rotor is going to come up. And with the rotor up like that, it makes it much easier to put the back part on. I'm going to put the shims on, just like that, make sure they're seated well. And now we're going to pull our centering tool out, like that. So now it, it moves, there's not much you can do about it, as I say, it's an inherent problem it's not really a problem, but just one of an obstacle that you have to overcome when you're assembling these motors. This is one of the things, even though it, this is a pain, it, I think it still makes a better structure. So with that down, I'm going to put this over, put this down, and then you can see that it moved down. What I, the, the end of the rotor now went up into the bearing in this back half of the motor. And now I'm going to slowly pull this up. I'm trying not to say any bad words because this can be so frustrating sometimes when I'm here by myself and the, the motor doesn't want to really go together. But I successfully got it in there pretty quickly that time. Sometimes it takes a few minutes of just being patient. Get it up here on the, so it registers correctly, keeps everything square. So now we have this back together. I'm going to make a quick examination. If you look down there real closely, you can see the white insulator. So I'm sure that I've got it in there. Uh, again, it, it can be very frustrating if you have to take the motor apart because you forgot to have that in there. You can ask me about that. So I always double check. Just put my screws in. Again, this is a two millimeter wrench. Typically they line up pretty good. I'm not gonna tighten them up until I get them all started. The good thing about the aluminum screws that the motor produces a whole lot more torque than, screw, than the steel screws do, but realize that even though these are hardened 70, 75 screws, you can still get a cross thread on them. So you just, you do have to be a little careful with them. They're very rugged, but again, okay, now I've got them all started, so I'm back here. And I wouldn't recommend driving these in with some kind of a, uh, you know, uh, any of the, the electric driven uh, pistol grips um, that is for your final tightening, because you really don't want to do that. Again, these are very rugged screws, but even steel screws, I've seen guys strip these out. So I always, the final tightening, I always do with my 
a hand tool. And again, that is a just kind of a snug fit. We're not, I'm not going in here and, and cranking them down real hard. Okay, we're back. Let's see if it rotates. We're back to normal. So there you go. That's how you take these motors apart, how they go back together, a little bit about how the motor works itself. We'll be talking about that later, uh, for sure, about more uh, detailed work on how the timing board works and that kind of stuff. But hope, hopefully you found this to be good and that uh, you'll look forward to uh, part two and those other parts following. Thanks.